This is Support is Sexy, episode 324. Stand up for yourself. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I interview inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and their lessons to help you take your business and your life to the next level and create something sexy. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm happy to have you here. It just would not be the same without you. And today, I actually need your feedback. I have a story to tell you. Sit back. I got a story to tell. I, well, as you all know, if you've been listening for a while in the past year, it's almost been a year now, I relocated from New York to Atlanta, which required some adjustments, least of which is finding new places to be beautified, if that's even a word. Beautification, we need to find new locations to do that. So that's the nails, that's the hair, that's all of these things. I honestly have not found any places that I love. Yes, I'm biased and being a New York snob when it comes to that. Not that there aren't fantastic places here in Atlanta. I know there are. I just haven't found them yet. So I'm experimenting. I go to different places and get things done that I would usually get done when I was at home. Brows, lashes, mani, petty, whatever. Little things. These aren't problems. This is just how it is when you're readjusting to a new location. There are things you have to find, grocery store, all of these things, experimenting until you find the one that you like. You nail it and that's where you go. So I recently found a new nail salon or beauty. No, it's not a beauty salon. I guess it's more nail salon, but they do things like brows, lashes, obviously mani pedis and that kind of thing. It's a new place. I decided to give it a try. I went there for a manicure first, I think, and then a pedicure. And then I went back recently to get my lashes done. Now, that's not something I do regularly. Usually it's when I'm going someplace or doing something. For those of you who don't know, that means getting false lashes placed on. I get individuals. This might be too much detail, but you understand. I know some of you are makeup artists. I know you get it. Others of you, we just enjoy doing these things every once in a while. Nails and everything are all mine, but sometimes I do play with the lashes. My friend Tamiko actually got me hooked on that. In any case, I decided, well, since I'm here, this is new. Let me give it a try. Okay, so here's where the story gets interesting. That's the setup. This is the part of the story I want to ask you about. So I go in, the lady is lovely, her name is Julie, she said, her name is Julie. So she tells me to lay down, of course, it seems very relaxing in a private room, a small room, nicely decorated, very peaceful, laid back, and she tells me what she's going to do, asks me what kind I want, et cetera, we go through that. I lay back, then another young lady comes into the room, and they start talking, and I think they're going to talk just for a little while, maybe she's asking her something, they're not speaking English, so I'm not certain what the context of the conversation is, so it's fine, they start talking, and she keeps talking, and she keeps talking, and she keeps talking, and she keeps talking. 20 minutes go by the whole time that Julie is giving me my treatment and trying to tell me to relax, which is funny. I guess I was tensing up the entire time they were having a full on conversation in this closed space, quiet, which would have been otherwise a quiet room where I could just lay back, have a few minutes just to myself, nobody asking me for anything, treat myself and all of that. It would have been a pleasant experience had that not happened. But here's the thing, at no point throughout that entire time, even though I thought about it the entire time, because I kept in the first few minutes, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to wrap it up. She must be asking a question. She must be complaining about something, et cetera. But then as time went on, I was probably tensing up because the whole time I was thinking, I should say something. Should I say something? But I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't know if I was afraid that Julie was going to mess up my lashes and put them on upside down or something. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? I'm the customer. I should be able to say, you know what? I really would like peace and quiet. Can you talk about whatever this is? Because I don't know the context of the conversation. Later, I could have said something, but I didn't. And it was because, at least at that time in my mind, I was thinking, okay, it's not a big deal. You're being too tense about it. You're getting uptight about this. There's no reason. Just let them talk. What's the big deal? Just relax. I literally went through all this conversation when I'm supposed to be relaxing in order to make them comfortable as opposed to thinking about myself. Now, 
What I started to question after the whole experience, and she was perfectly nice and the treatment was great and I loved the lashes and all that good stuff. She told me to come back if there's any problems. I thought about even telling her after when I was paying, you know what, next time you should make sure that you do it with no one else in there so it can be more relaxing. Then I thought, again, I talked myself out of it. Oh, just let it go. You're being petty. What's the big deal? That kind of thing. That was last week. And I am still thinking about it, which is why I'm bringing it to you. And which is why I believe that really bothered me. Not the fact that the young lady was in there talking for 20 or 30 minutes nonstop, even though a customer was sitting there. There's that. But what bothered me is that I did not stand up for myself. So that is what I'm bringing to you today. Are there times when you know that you should stand up for yourself, even if it's what may seem like the smallest, simplest most common pedestrian thing, is there a time when you should or are there times when you know in you there's something in you, it bothers you, you feel like you need to stand up for yourself and not obviously in this case, it's not that someone is doing something to you, but still you don't feel comfortable maybe or you're in a situation where you want something done differently, something that you're even paying for. Hello, that was me. Something that you're paying for, you have a right to say, oh, this isn't how I want it. It's all about how you say it, right? It's not that you say it. I say it in reflection now. It's how you say it. So I'm sure I would have said it in a way that's completely lovely and it probably would have been fine. In fact, I'm sure it would have been fine. But there was something in there that was not afraid to say anything, but wanted to not disrupt anything or that talked myself out of it and almost belittled myself for even thinking that this was something that I should complain about. Does that make sense? Is this something that any of you go through? And I don't have the answers for all of this. As I said, it's just something I've been reflecting on, but it's been with me for a week. So I know that it bothered me and that I should have said something because sometimes most times actually, saying something is the easiest way to let it go. You do it in a way that honors the other person, which I'm sure I would have, explains to them what your position is, why you're making this request, and then you let it go and you move on. Instead, you might end up like me and carrying little small grievances around that pick at you for over a week, right? Instead of just letting it go, saying it in the moment and moving on, you hold on to it. And this happens, of course, when you're getting a mani-pedi or any kind of treatment, but it can also happen in your business or it can also happen in your personal life. I mean, there's times, I'll, I'll tell you all, there are times too, you know, I'm closer to my parents now and proximity-wise, I've always been close to them as far as relationship, but closer to them in proximity. I'm an adult, Now, there are some things that they say that I just have to let it go. You know, they mean well, they love you. You just got to let it go. Otherwise, you'll be constantly stressed. There are things, there are times when you just let things go. But even in that case with your family, your friends, whoever it is, if it's something that deep within you, you think it really bothers you, upsets you or whatever, you just feel like it's something that you need to say something about Say it in a way that honors the other person, but that really honors you and your feelings and your thoughts. Are you all in your feelings? Maybe. But hey, say, you know what? I think I might be in my feelings, but this is what I'm feeling about what you just said. Sometimes you need to let it go. Most times you need to let it go and not hold on to these things that you are going to, again, could potentially carry for weeks. Sometimes these things go on for years. Have you ever had a conversation with someone about something you did that you weren't even aware of a long time ago, sometimes years ago. I don't know if I've had that conversation. I'm trying to think. Maybe. I'm sure I have. There's probably something that, or just some, even if it's not a year or so ago, something that you did inadvertently, didn't even think about it, and the person was so injured by it, and you had no idea until they finally said something. So we all do it. Like Even the women that I'm speaking about, I'm sure they meant nothing by it. They were speaking actually quietly. So it wasn't like they were screaming. It's just that they were talking the entire time as opposed to go outside and wait until she's not with the customer. But that's the thing. We all do things like this. So when it's your turn to stand up for yourself, Do you take that opportunity? Do you do that? And how do you do that? Now, I will say I come from a family of strong black women who will tell you when you are out of line, not because they're sassy or not because they're quote unquote angry black women. They are just women who are raised to speak their minds. They have no problem doing it. But I didn't get that gene or not in that way. I guess I got a little bit on my dad's side, which is quieter, more pleasant. Not that my Women in my family aren't pleasant, but in a different way. They deliver the message, if at all, in a different way. But mostly, they swallow whatever the problem is. They don't talk about it. They don't like disruption. They don't like confrontation. They just want to forget about it and move on. The problem is, 
You don't forget about it. Sometimes you might be holding on to things or holding grudges, even if you're not fully aware that you're holding on to it. That becomes another problem. We act a certain way or act out in other ways or other passive aggressive ways towards a person or a situation, but really it's something else that's bothering us, not that current situation. That's something that can roll over again into your business, into your business relationships, your client relationships, your personal relationships. You're holding on to something the other person doesn't know about because you're holding on to it thinking that you swallowed it, but it's still there and infecting your relationship, if you will. Whereas if you're like, my other side of the family, you say it and you forget about it. In fact, they hurt feelings. You might not even know that you've been cut. You look down and you're bleeding. You didn't even know what happened. They're that good with it. And I actually admire that. I don't have that gene unless really, really pushed. That's the thing. If I were pushed really far, then all of that comes out. But otherwise, most things I can let go. But I am checking myself and I'm saying all this to you just as well to share with you what my experiences are, but also a check in for you. Are there times when you need to stand up for yourself when you don't? And usually it's hardest for us to do with the people we care about, whether that's coworkers, employees, people in our lives, loved ones. Usually that's when it's hardest for us to stand up for ourselves. Most times with strangers, you probably would just say, hey, look, I need some quiet time or whatever it is. Put up that boundary and move on. But sometimes it's the people closest to us that it's most difficult for us to stand up for them. And standing up for yourself could look a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's saying exactly what's going on or what you need to say. Sometimes it's hearing negative feedback about something you're doing. Say you've got this great idea for a business or you want to do this trip around the world or something else has come up in an opportunity that you want to take advantage of and you're getting negative feedback that is usually based in fear from people who love you. Well, standing up for yourself might be you just saying, I'm going to do this thing, even if not verbally, deciding you're going to do this thing and move forward because you believe in it. You're standing up for yourself by saying, I'm not going to bow down to everyone else's fears. I don't need that right now. I need to believe in myself and move forward. So again, I don't have all the answers. I did want to share it with you. Let me know what you think on social media at Elaine Fluker at Support is Sexy. You can post an Instagram story about it. You can leave me a comment. You can mention me on Twitter, Facebook, wherever it is. Communicate with me and let me know what you think. And of course, if it's something personal, you can email me Elaine at Elaine Fluker. But doing it on social media is great because everybody gets to see it unless it's a private message. But otherwise, everybody gets to see it and we can talk about it. Let me know what ways you are standing up for yourself. All right. So thank you so much for being here. You know, I appreciate you and thank you for indulging me in my personal story here. Always checking in with myself, right? Always encouraging you to check in with yourself. So now until next time, you know what to do. Go out there and create something sexy. Stand up for yourself and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.